Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us at the Bend Film Festival's 2020 Virtual Film Festival. And today we're talking to some of the directors of some of the shorts in our local focus program. I'm T. Fly Peterson, your moderator. And with me today are Timothy Jackson, Sweeb. Oh, no, help me say your name. Timothy. Sweeb, <laughs> yeah. Sweeb, thank you. <laughs> Who uh, basically made the movie Paper Cutting Man, along with Joel Clements, who directed in and acted in uh, Split Time, and Dana Buendia, who created the short film, Sure. Yes. I think what's so fun about our local focus program is that you get to see our landscape in so many different stories. And uh, your both of your films in particular kind of showcase the landscape really differently. Would you guys tell us a little bit about um, maybe where you filmed and, and your process? Uh, maybe we could start with you, Tim. Yeah, so um, I, I really like seeing Oregon filmed in, uh, you know, whatever context, but typically the image of Oregon is the lush green valley Portland kind of image, which is nice and is very aesthetically pleasing for films, but like uh, part of the fun of making stuff in Central Oregon is showing that other side of Oregon, like a deserty, foresty kind of environment. So um, I, I live uh, outside of Bend, so that's, I have more of that kind of high desert um, image. And so uh, a lot of it was filmed kind of in the, the Badlands, just <laughs> out in the Oregon wilderness in the like the BLM land kind of thing. And uh, so a lot of it was, wasn't that like, you know, particular places is just kind of out in the world essentially. Um, typically like, like a, a few miles from where I live, um, which is just kind of just barren uh wasteland that can look kind of kind of beautiful in some contexts i think and you made it look a little sci-fi you know it look, could have been like futuristic or it could have been a different galaxy yeah yeah i i tried to kind of half emulate like um the kind of effective like vhs tapes and like the weird color layering those have and to make it look more kind of like low budget than it even was, so that like it, it feels even more um, like tacky or like like a lost piece of media or something. Um, but yeah, I, I think that kind of masked a little bit some of the um, just massive like just gray, <laughs> you know, Oregon desert. You know, I'm so okay. sorry. Yeah, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay. So my first question is uh, a little different actually for you, Dano. You actually didn't use a landscape, you use your computer and your yeah. animation skills. Yeah, that's true, yeah. Um, I actually, I produced the whole thing here in Bend. It was funny because uh, my wife and I recorded the audio uh, almost 20 years ago and then I had it saved somewhere. And then over the holiday break, I was like, I found it all. I was like, oh, I'm gonna finish this. And I had just, um, bought this new software and some other things. So it helped me finish it in a matter of like two days because I was doing performance capture. So I was actually using a webcam and it's me acting out both the parts. And uh, so the the backgrounds are just, um, I think I got them from uh, a website that, uh, that people just allow you to download their images and um, they give it to you for free, which is awesome uh, for your creation. So there's like two different backgrounds of supposedly the same bar and that's what's in there but the whole thing was created in Ben but uh, there's no images of Ben. Didn't. So That's so interesting. Yeah. I love that. Um, so I'll go back to that question when Joel comes back but uh, let's keep talking. So I'm curious to hear about you had that audio for 20 years? Yeah I think pretty close to uh, if it, it might it might be 15 but maybe uh, uh, in between but um, I recorded the audio and we were just dating at the time, um, but we were both kind of writing the short and I told her the idea of it. And so we were writing it out and recorded all the parts. And then um, like a lot of people, it just got shelved and I totally forgot about it. And uh, it was just on a CD. So I was uh, in 2019 at the end of the year, I was going through some files and I picked up the CD and I was like, oh, I forgot about this. And I popped it in and uh, there was all these audio parts. And I was like, oh, this is the short we're, we were gonna do. And at that time, I actually had drawn a lot of images and I only got maybe, I don't know, like a couple of seconds done. I was like, oh, it's going to take forever. So then when I shelved it and then when I found it again, I was like, oh, well, I just bought software to help me 
do all these things because at the time I was doing it just by hand drawing. And it, um, I got the whole thing done in like two days, which totally surprised me. And then uh, I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, well, I'm going to start putting it into the film fest circuit. <laughs> so, and uh, it was like a little, little romance project that we had done. It was kind of based on our dating situation. So that's that was it. Yeah. I love too that you waited long enough that kind of technology caught up for, for you. Right. Yeah. It was really fortunate that that happened. Um, and of course now we have a kid, uh, so we have a totally different perspective. So to look back on that whole thing and uh, just to, to do the animation again was, was pretty fun. What a so, great story. What yeah. about you, Tim? How did you come to tell your story? How long, like, what was your process? I mean, you had an extensive shoot. There were seemed to be a lot of different scenes and, um, yeah, I mean, um, I relate uh, to Dano as well, because like, not as long, but like our, the production history of this, even though it's a tiny short film, it was three, four years. Because um, I started shooting it in high school as just kind of a like quite literal joke, like, just like, haha, wouldn't it be funny if we did this, where like somebody has a piece of paper and they could kill somebody with it sort of thing. And then like, we just kind of kept adding scenes and it kind of grew from there um and like the first scene we shot was the um scene where uh I first appear in the film and I'm like standing on the the rocks and I like uh there's like the sun behind me and uh that was almost four years ago now and then in the, the film you can see me uh just kind of have a beard halfway through uh so we had to come up with an excuse for that too um but yeah, so it, it just sort of sort of started as a joke. And then I kind of put a lot of effort into the editing. And so like when we were shooting it, it was just sort of like, what if we did this? What if we did that? And then like the editing, I spent like a, a lot of time trying to make it look good or at least like interesting and unique. And um, so the editing I kind of, kind of took seriously, but the filming we didn't take seriously at all. It was just sort of like, you know, just kind of throwing stuff at the wall, essentially. <laughs> well, it's interesting because your film, which is very different from Dano's film and, jo and Joel's film, but uh, you also, you used a lot of special effects. And what I kind of loved about them, this shows my age, is they feel like old school special effects a little bit. So I'm kind of curious for both of you, um, Dano and Tim, like what, programs did you use to create in? Like, what were you using your special effects in, Tim, and what program did you use to create in, Dano? And whoever wants to jump in first. Do you want to go first, Tim? Yeah, sure. I mean, my my answer isn't that flattering. It's, it's, it was all within Adobe Premiere. Uh, there's no real, like, you know, digital special effects, really, except for, like, the way I did the color correction, editing and stuff, like, that's only really possible digitally. Um, but all the effects are practical and they're not, you know, supposed to look realistic. Like we would just kind of like make blood and throw it on people kind of thing, you know? So it, it was, it's kind of trying to play on that whole eighties, uh, slasher trope without feeling like the kind of new wave of stuff that's trying to feel like that, but it's like super edgy. I didn't want it to be like, uh, like actually disturbing really like it's it's just supposed to be funny and kind of um uh have that weird homemade charm to it that some of those films have like um i'm particularly thinking of a movie called maniac that's like a new york slasher film and it's it's like the effects aren't good but like there's something so charming about it and the guy's like the acting isn't good but it's like you can kind of get carried away by the um you know enjoyment you can tell they had a lot of fun making it you know <laughs> what about you dana what did you what kind of computer stuff did you use for that? yeah uh so i had just um bought cartoon animator uh four and that came out and actually had a module that allows you to motion capture your face and apply it to the 2d animation so i had just obtained that and i was playing with it and then uh, as I had found the audio, I was like, well, how am I going to get that? Because I didn't record our faces. Like, oh, I'll just act both the parts out. So I just ran it through all the way through. Uh, so the audio was already edited. It was in Premiere, um, like back in the day, but it was already 
strung out and timed so that I just had to act it all out. So then I acted, I did it twice. So I did two passes. I acted my part or the male part out and then the female part out. And then I just edited them back and forth. So in uh, Cartoon Animator 4, um, all you have to do is turn on this webcam and record your face. And um, after I had those shots, I rendered them and then just tried to edit them on, uh, I just knocked the background out. And I was thought, okay, I'll just figure out where they're gonna be later. And then after the edit was done, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna get online and see what I could do for free images. Um, Cause I didn't want to spend that much on it. I think the whole thing cost me less than a thousand, um, not including the time. Uh, so uh, after doing that, I was like, oh, okay, well, they're probably not on the bar, they're in a coffee place. He's asking her to go to coffee, which is kind of, kind of funny. So I was like, okay, I need a background. So I found these two images that are from two photographers and they had brick um, kind of in the in the background. So I thought, okay, I'll just use these two. Yeah. And I just put it all together and then I showed it to Alon. Um, and she was like, oh, well, you finished that. I was like, it only took you 20 years or whatever. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of funny. And so, um, and then that was edited in um, hit film, which at the time, uh, the version I had was free. So it's like After Effects, but it's um, like an independent company. And then after that went so well, I was like, all right, well, I'll buy the pro version. So now I own the version. So it's like, uh, I created all the animation in Cartoon Anime 4 and then edited it, it edited it in uh, hit film. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Wonderful. I love how accessible all this feels now. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, this is all like off the shelf stuff and like just obtaining, it's really cool now that things are free, like even software, like people are just like, hey, you want to use my software? It's like, yeah, I would love to use your software. Yeah. Is, is it okay to use it for this? And they're like, yeah, please use it for that. So there's like the whole, this whole time now where everyone has kind of leveled the playing field. Like it used to be like everyone had to purchase lots of equipment, which is why I didn't finish like 20 years ago. It's like, oh, this is a huge investment. And now it's just like, okay, well, you can just download it and, and use it. And if you have the proper hardware, which is kind of moderate in terms of uh, expense, it's like, it's great that just that anyone could just make something and put it out there. Yeah. Fantastic. Joel, that was perfect timing. I know, I, I didn't want to jump in in the middle, so I'm so sorry about that. Today's no, day is crazy. Okay. That was kind of perfect timing because Dana had actually literally just come to the end of a really good thought. Yeah. And, um, oh, yeah, I was, I didn't want to, I didn't want to steal the, the crescendo by, <laughs> by, by logging and saying, here I am. But let's go back. So we were talking a little about like, um, both of their films used a lot of uh, techno, like what the technology was in their films. But we want to go back to you talking to you about where you shot um, split, <laughs> split time. I, don't yeah. know, I can't say that. Where you shot split time. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit about that and, and your process out there? Yeah. So um, almost entirely was up on the Green Lakes Loop up towards South Sister, and uh, the. So the, uh, the original idea for the film was really just, well, it was actually when I was on a um, uh, run and it was a relay race, an overnight relay race. And I was, it was the middle of nowhere, just absolute middle of nowhere. And I um, uh, kicked a rock accidentally and it hit into my shin and it, it hurt. Like it just hit in such a way, like it hit the nerve and it scared me half to death. And for a second, I thought it was a snake or something. And I thought, if I just got bitten by a snake, I'm gone. Like, I'm done, you know, and that kind of thing. And then I realized I was okay. And so I went to start running again and realized I paused my little watch. And I was like, really? So even when I think I'm about to die from a snake bite, I make sure my... And so that's what actually inspired it. But then when I was up with some friends on the Green Lakes Trail and we were talking about, you know, Central Oregon is so beautiful, but that Green Lakes Trail, like, no matter where you're looking, it's just awe-inspiring right just practically every step of the way and that just seemed like we should come up here right if, we, if we're going to do this let's do it here because um there were a number of shots where we were thinking oh this will look great for you know this but then when we shot it and like turned the camera we we're like oh that's even better you know and that kind of thing so um it just felt like Obviously we didn't really need to shoot it all in one location. And there are a few shots that we had to pick up elsewhere. Um, but it just sort of felt like that continuity, especially for people in the area will feel like, oh yeah, that's there. Oh, there's the waterfall, you know, and that kind of thing. And it just, I don't know. Uh, it, it, I felt like it might give it a more cohesive feel. So. 
Oh yeah, it absolutely did. And and what I love um, was is just that like how you it felt like you were just out there for five minutes. Like the whole uh -huh. thing just felt really, you know, like you were just. It was so beautiful and easy. It does feel. It did feel like when you go out into our 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 beautiful wilderness. That's so yeah. close here in Bend. Yeah, really the, 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 actually the hardest call that I went round and round on was whether to go all the way up to Green Lake because it is so stunning up there. Um, but it was, the, it was this funny mix of, will it almost be too, too much, like distracting, but also, um, you know, there's snow up there, right, until the end of August. And I just thought, you know, if you're not in this area, if you're not living in the mountains, and you see her leave wearing a shorts and a tank top and suddenly she's surrounded by snow. Are you gonna be like, how far did she go? You know, so we, we felt like it might actually be distracting, yeah. but it was really hard to give up. You know, if you've been up there, the lava flow and the, you know, the mountains are like shooting up around you, so. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All of a sudden it's a science fiction story. Right, exactly. Like, well, yeah, of course she's tired. She's run like 75 miles, so. <laughs> Yeah, that's also just a great, that's just such a great commentary on our local landscape here. You know, you yeah. go from Bend where it's sunny through the snow over Mount Hood into the rain of Portland yep. in a day. So that's great. So um, I'm just going to kind of wrap up a little bit, but I have a last question for everyone. I'm curious about what you're doing now with films. Are you working on any projects? Do you have any coming up? And also maybe uh, let people know how they could find more of your work if you have it available. Whoever would like to start. Uh, well, oh, sure, I'll go. <laughs> um, I, so ironically, actually, I, I had a, a planned shoot this summer, but with COVID that of course got shot down because especially the whole thing took place in a small, <gasps> restaurant and I just felt like well that's not going to happen um but I was really determined I felt like I you know I want to shoot just something even if it's a three minute thing with my kids you know uh, at least once a year and so I was doing a, a quick pickup reshoot with the actress with split time and we were talking about you know should we have gone all the way up to Green Lake and she said well you can do it for the sequel you can tell the story of your character and we laughed and then I was like that's kind of an interesting idea. Like in, in her story, he's this fantasy of, you know, what she wishes her life was. But of course, that's never, the, like our visions of other people are never what's really going on with them. So I thought, sure, I mean, I can do that, right? I can go up to green, I can do it by myself if I have to. I wound up getting a great, great uh, camera person, cinematographer, but, um, and so it felt a little weird to like, shoot it again <laughs> in essence but it was also kind of neat to say like all right what's going on with his life you know and so um yeah so it's actually made just a little companion piece to split time oh fantastic i love that that's so creative well and my hope is that it could actually you know i might be able to put them together and sort of make it one larger piece yeah i love how covid uh may force me to kind of rethink things and find uh -huh. out. yeah i know that's great. What about you, Dano? What are you? Are you working on anything new? I am. Um, my son, he uh, he's eight now, but he he wrote a book. It was like a fake little book that he created um, when he was like three, and he would tell us the story. And every time he told us, it would get uh, more involved, and the story would flush out. So now that um, he's eight now, and so I actually took that sheet of paper, or a bunch of paper that he stapled together and uh he made it to a book i'm taking his stuff and i made all the drawings into like a more polished drawing and now i'm doing um i'm also doing an animated version of it so the book is called monster in the mood uh, which we're just going to publish uh independently through like a book baby or something and then um i just did a trailer for that for some other another contest that was online and so that's out now so if you go on vine you know, and type in monster in the mood you can go see that um it's really short it's like 30 seconds but it's just kind of a prototype for us to flesh out the characters and kind of figure out how we would do the animation fully and take his little tiny book that's about it's kind of like social emotional stuff um, and turn it into a watch experience and also a reading experience. Oh, I love that. I love how personal your work is and I love how you're willing to take time with something. 
Oh, thanks. Yeah. Time for sure. I probably, I'm hoping I won't take 20 years to do this one. So, uh, um, uh, it should be out, uh, probably within the next few months. So we're super oh. excited about that. Yeah. That's so great. And what about you, Tim? You're in school right now down in California. Right. So sort of my big film related project right now is in fact, um, getting a film society started at my college because we don't have a film program or anything. Um, so I'm kind of trying to get the beginnings of that um, started and um, working on short films with people there. Um, I do have a short film we're gonna try to work on about, uh, I'll just say a couple getting into an argument at a bus stop. And then also um, during the pandemic, the early days of the quarantine, um, when things were really, you couldn't go anywhere. Um, I was forced to, you know, just be inside all day. So I did end up writing a, a novel. Um, and so I'm gonna, it's, it's really an idea I've had for a feature film all my life. And so I'm hoping to get the novel to go somewhere. Um, and then hopefully like long-term goal is to make it into a feature film. So that's called Paper Cups. And it's about a, um, a schizophrenic patient who's, um, he's manipulated by an amnesiac patient, um, but nobody believes him because he's a schizophrenic. And um, so that, that I'm, I'm in the works of editing it and maybe getting it, you know, published or self-published or something like that. Oh, that sounds fantastic. Wow, Thank you. that's exciting actually to hear what you're all working on. There's some really good stuff coming down the line. I look forward to. Well, thank you all so much for um, joining us today and thank you for sharing your work with Ben Film. And I'm so glad we got to screen it this year. And I look forward to more from all of you. So thank you so much. Thank you thank everyone you. for joining thank us. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, uh, Ben Film. Yeah, it's been yeah. a great experience. Yeah, it was a great job working with what they had for the virtual and all that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. How exciting for all of you. They really were fun. And I'm really excited to see more stuff. That's so cool. All right. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks so very much. much. Have a great rest of your day, everybody. <laughs>